in breaking news that will surprise absolutely no one, it seems that Australians love dual cab utes. Ranger and Hilux still sitting atop the charts a few years after they first went there and now they remain as popular as ever but we've got a revised Hilux on sale and we've got an all new D-Max so it's pretty exciting if you are in the market for a new dual cab ute. For me the fact that the D-Max is now technologically up to date is the big takeaway here. Sam we're going to be doing specific off-road testing and towing testing down the line but for now we're focusing on road. What's the most important stuff we're looking for here? It's all about that daily grind sort of stuff. So on-road refinement, comfort, how the engines drive, interior, tech, safety, all that stuff. And I have to say, this all-new D-Max, new chassis, new suspension, new engine, it's going to be interesting. And Josh, we spoke about that. D-Max all new and finally Isuzu's up to date. It's a big deal for them, right? Yeah, this is the newest ute on sale in Australia today. The Ranger has actually been around with us in this guy since 2011. Hilux since 2015, so it's going to be good to see how the all-new D-Max goes up against the two champions of the segment. As I said, we will be doing towing and off-road testing specifically down the track. So if there's anything you want to know about those two disciplines, let us know in the comments section below and we'll make sure we answer those questions for you. But for now, whether people want to admit it or not, most buyers of these dual cabs use them around town and as default family and lifestyle vehicles. So we're going to concentrate on-road. Let's get into it. We're testing the top model in the new Isuzu D-Max range, the X-Terrain. For now, it replaces the LST, but is more of a rival to the Ford Ranger Wildtrak. The X-Terrain comes with a body kit, a painted version of the 18-inch wheels off the Isuzu D-Max LSU, a roller shutter hard lid, and a tub liner. However, a tow bar is still optional, even though it is standard on the top three model grades of the Hilux and Ranger. It comes with a full suite of advanced safety tech, including the first centre airbag in a ute in Australia. Okay, Sam, all new D-Max. This is vitally important for the brand. Goes without saying. What stands out for you, mate? It's got to be the engine. Still a three litre, still a 4J, that engine that everyone loves, but it's all new. New block, new head, new turbo, new injection system. It's got more power and torque than it used to, and it's a lot smoother, and I think it's a winner. Josh, for you? Look, I love the design. I think this is a great looking truck. Then again, Isuzu has had six years to get it right. And I love how Isuzu really has loaded this with every available piece of advanced safety tech. They could have cut a few corners and they didn't. We talk a lot about Isuzu reliability, the fact they build trucks and that this engine's just designed to go on forever. Up until this point, Isuzu's really been fighting with its hands tied behind its back because it's been such an old model. So for me, I love the fact that Isuzu can now bring a bang up to date dual cab to the fight with the segment leaders. We're testing the Toyota Hilux SR5 Plus, which starts from $62,420 before on-road costs and is currently the most expensive Hilux on sale until Rogue and Rugged X arrive. Without doubt, Toyota's strongest USP is its extensive dealer network, meaning you're never far from parts or servicing, no matter where you are in Australia. The Hilux is a really interesting case study in Australia, certainly for me, because it hasn't been the outright leader in the segment for quite some time, and yet it's the number one sales seller. So Australians really don't care which is the best ute, they just keep buying them anyway. Sam, what stands out for you with the Hilux? We've still got a 2.8 litre turbo diesel under the bonnet, but it's been given a bit of a birthday. So we've now got 150 kilowatts and 500 newton metres there, and first impressions, it's a lot perkier and a little bit quieter at the same time. Josh, for you? I actually really love this update. I think it's a much bolder design. There's been a bit of hate on the socials. It always is. It does it for me. And finally, guys, digital speed display, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and volume knobs. Thank you. <laughs> Better finally. Than ever, eh? That's yeah, it. absolutely. We kept asking. For me, I'm going to pick something that you can't actually see, and you might think it's a bit boring, but this test is focusing on the on road performance and the unladen ride of this Hilux is light years better than the old one. With the old model, it just simply wasn't good enough. Now it's been completely changed, it feels completely different, whether you're a driver or a passenger. So for me, that's the highlight of the new Hilux. Discounting the performance-oriented Ranger Raptor, this wild track with a two litre twin turbo diesel and 10 speed automatic gearbox is the most expensive Ranger in the ranks. But it's not the most expensive in this comparison. It weighs in at $64,490 drive away. Okay boys, last but certainly not least, old gold, the old favourite Ford Ranger. Sam, what's a feature for you mate? This old Ranger, it is the oldest out of here but it's been continually updated throughout its life. But 2 litre twin turbo diesel there, it's the smallest but it's got the best numbers out of this company. 
157 kilowatts and 500 newton meters, and what it lacks in displacement, it makes up with gear ratios. 10 in there. Yeah, which is about one, two, three, at least four too many. Josh, what stands out for you, mate? I love how this is a turnkey solution for a lot of customers. You've got the remote control roller shutter now. I love how Ford's continually updated this car and it's still really current and for me, still one of the best utes in the category. Well, they say mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery, so I'm going to steal both of your ideas. For me, the highlight is how Ford has continually updated this Ranger over the course of its life. They've updated, upgraded, and made it more appealing to the buyer. And to be honest, these things have quite a long shelf life on the market. So this should be a case study for every other dual cab manufacturer in how to do it. And it's the best feature of the Ranger for me. For 2020, not a lot has changed inside the Toyota Hilux except for a couple of really important things. We've now got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, volume and tuning dials on the infotainment screen which is great for bumpy roads, and finally a digital speed display. Not everyone's a fan of the Hilux interior, particularly the sweeping dash or the tablet style display or the hard plastics, but actually I don't mind it. It's hard wearing and it's extremely practical. The seats might look plain but they're actually really comfortable. And of course, we've got a chilled glove box, which is great for keeping snacks and drinks cool in the heat of summer. The Wild Track is the top of the lineup for Ranger, with the exception of Raptor, of course. So you get a leather look dash. We've got a slightly more upmarket garnish with the Wild Track logo, matches the Wild Track logo in the seats. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, digital radio, built in navigation, and new for 2020, Ford Pass, which means you can use a smartphone to start and stop the Ranger. It also tells you its location. I really love the attention to detail in the Ranger. It's the only unit in the class with an extendable sun visor, which is great for blocking side glare on country roads when the sun's going down. I also love the central locking door switches in both front doors, and they're illuminated, so you can see when you're driving along whether the doors are locked or not. The interior is starting to look a little bit dated, but it's highly functional. Massive door pockets, really clear displays, but it misses out on height and reach adjustment on the steering wheel. We've got tilt adjustment only, but it's still one of the most comfortable cabins in the class. It's easy to see why the Ranger is one of the top selling utes in Australia. The new Isuzu D-Max is a big step up especially in the interior. It's a much more modern design. We've got soft touch materials on the dash, really nice, comfortable leather seats, and one of the largest infotainment screens in the class. We've got massive door pockets, twin lid glove boxes, digital speed display, and of course, all the advanced safety tech. Of course, no one makes the perfect car. Room for improvement, although the infotainment has one of the highest resolution screens in the class, Unfortunately, it's paired to quite a blurry rear camera. The functionality isn't as good as it is in some of these other utes, and we've got buttons instead of dials, and that can be a bit annoying on bumpy roads. To sum up, all three of these utes are really comfortable, but certainly the Isuzu D-Max has had a big step up. Second row in the Hilux, definitely the tightest of the three. I've got less knee room and less foot room, so it's not quite as comfortable back here. However, you do sit high, so the visibility is quite good and there's plenty of headroom as well. Air vents, which is a good thing. No power, which isn't a good thing. Don't quite understand that. I reckon Toyota definitely should add some power in the second row. Where the Isuzu gets one takeaway bag hook, Toyota gets two, so that's pretty clever. And this seat, like the other two, is reasonably comfortable. It's not too angular, not too sharp at the back, so you sit pretty well. It's not as good as the other two, but it's definitely not bad back here either. If you want to get down to the finer details, it's here in the second row where you could say the Ranger loses out a little bit, certainly to the other two dual cabs, and starts to feel its age a little. You've got a regular household plug for charging devices, as well as a conventional 12 volt socket, but no USB, no air vents. However, you still do get plenty of room in the second row of the Ranger. That's my driving position. I've got plenty of knee room. I can get my feet under the seat. Headroom's not a problem as well. And this seat itself is pretty comfortable. So it's still pretty good in the second row of the Ranger. One of the areas the D-Max has made a real leap forward is inside the cabin, and that continues through to the second row. You've got vents. Very few in the class have second row vents. You've got a USB power outlet, takeaway hook, which is really clever for plastic bags, and it's pretty comfortable. Again, you've got uh, room for your feet under the seats, about as much knee room as the Ranger and more than the Hilux, and this uh, seat itself, pretty comfortable as well. So the story that starts really well in the front row continues through into the second row of the D-Max. 
The Trayon Forge Ranger measures in at 1,405 mils long and 1,400 mils wide. There's 1,100 mil between the wheel arches and 490 mils of depth on offer. It's worth noting here that we took our own measurements during the test, so they will be different to manufacturer spec sheets. Ford's Ranger has the most equipped tub out of these three by quite a margin. First things first, we've got an electric roller cover. You can open it with your key. Now, while that's opening, this tailgate is weighted, nice and light, easy to handle. Yeah. And you'll notice we've it's got like a drop-in tub liner here. There are four tie-down points, one in each corner, and up the back there, you've got a 12-volt plug. I like it because it's quite well made and weatherproof. Two more things to mention about this Ranger. You'll notice there's weather strips along here, which will be better for keeping out water and dust while you're driving around. It's better than the other two utes, and you've also got another button in here to close the tailgate when you're all done. There you go. Next up is Isuzu's D-Max, which has a slightly longer and wider tray according to our measurements, 1450 and 1490 mil respectively. There's 1110 mil between the wheel arches and 480 mils of depth. Like the Ford Ranger, we've got a sailplan style sports bar here and we've got a roller cover as well, but it's manual. You've got to give this button a good push on top and there it's open, this tailgate is a lot heavier as well and you'll notice there's no weather sealing around there so you'll probably get a little bit more water and dust in. If it is raining you do have a bit of plumbing here which will keep water coming in from up the top mostly. In this specification which is top spec X terrain you've got a tub liner in the back here and that means you lose a couple of tight end points up the front you've only got two at the back which isn't particularly handy for a working vehicle. Also no 12 volt power whatsoever. Finally it's the Toyota Hilux. Without any tub liner, the Hilux effectively measures in as the biggest. So we got some measurements of an SR5 with a tub liner fitted for comparison's sake. That measures in at 1425 mil long and with 1100 mils between the arches. Depth is also the same as the D-Max, 480 mil. Now worth mentioning, there will be higher specification Hiluxes in the future, which will have different tub setups to this SR5. But for the time being, this is top spec new Hilux, and there's not a lot to report on. Firstly, there's no weather sealing in the tailgate of this Hilux. In fact, you can just about see daylight between the gaps there. So you're gonna have a very hard time keeping weather out of this tub and no tonneau cover whatsoever. Old school chrome sports bar in this company. The others have gone with sail planes. Let's open this up. No tub liner whatsoever. So before you load this thing up, you're gonna to have to put something in there. Drop in, spray in, whatever it is. You'll have to sort it out before you ruin the paint. You do have four tie down points there, one in each corner and zero 12 volt power. Although they're not race cars, we put a stopwatch on these three utes to see how their power figures translate to performance. It was a windy day, so these times could be a bit quicker in better conditions. These times were averages of four runs. But in this test, the Ford Ranger twin turbo 2 litre and 10 speed auto was the fastest of this trio from 0 to 100, stopping the clocks at 9.7 seconds. The Isuzu D-Max was second quickest with a time of 10.2 seconds, which was surprising given it has the least power and torque among these three. The Isuzu had the best braking performance, pulling up in 41.6 metres. The Hilux was next with 41.9 metres and the Ranger had the longest emergency braking distance, 42.8 metres. For what it's worth, the benchmarks in this class are the Volkswagen Amarok and Mercedes X-Class, which on road tyres can pull up in about 35 or 36 metres. The Isuzu D-Max retains a 3-litre turbo diesel, but it's a completely new design, with 140 kilowatts and 450 newton metres paired to a six-speed auto. The new D-Max is night and day compared to the old D-Max. It's a much more comfortable ride, much more comfortable suspension. But there is one downside. It doesn't quite corner as well as the other utes in this test. It's not meant to be a race car, but even though all three of these utes have identical tyres, the Ranger and the Hilux feel a bit more sure-footed in corners. Isuzu's very proud about how much quieter the new three litre engine is compared to the old three litre engine. But I've got to tell you, they're pretty much as noisy as each other. 
While the Ranger can still be had with a 3.2 litre 5 cylinder diesel that makes 147 kilowatts and 470 newton meters, which runs through a 6 speed auto or manual gearbox, we've got the more expensive option here. Pay an extra $1200 and you got a smaller 2 litre turbo diesel, which is only available as an automatic. This driveline has 157 kilowatts, 7 more than the Hilux, and an equal amount of torque, 500 newton meters. However, You've got 10 ratios in the gearbox, by far the most on the test. Naturally, with 10 gears there, the car is almost constantly changing gears up and down, trying to find that sweet spot of power and torque. However, it's done in a way that's mostly quite smooth. You don't really notice it unless you're paying attention. Sometimes you do get a bit of a shudder, and it does ruin things a little bit. It makes it feel a bit less smooth than the D-Max, for example, which is probably one of my favourites in terms of driveline out of this three. Another strong point for this Ranger is just general noise. You can hear probably right now how quiet this is. For a turbo diesel dual cab ute, imagine this 10 years ago, you wouldn't dream of it. Light electric steering, it's a good ride, it's really well insulated, and along with being quiet and responsive, this is a pretty quick ute. Definitely quicker and a lot smoother than the 3.2 litre Ranger with only a six speed auto. The Toyota Hilux has been revamped in terms of suspension. The D-Max is all new and both of them are much improved in terms of ride and handling. However, you've got to take your hat off to this Ford Ranger because despite being the oldest, it's still, in my opinion, the best around town. It's got a real suppleness to the ride. It soaks up bumps, it holds itself on corners quite well. So even though it is the oldest, in my opinion, not by much, but noticeably, it's the best. The Hilux's four-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine gets a power and torque boost up to 150 kilowatts and 500 newton meters when it's paired to the six-speed automatic as tested here, and the tow rating is now up to 3,500 kilograms. Well, the Hilux 2.8 litre diesel is a hell of a lot more refined than it used to be. It's a lot quieter, especially at idle. If you stand on it, work it up to redline, it does make a little bit more noise, but it is a lot quieter than it used to be. Gearbox, still as smooth as ever. I think it works really well, and I think it does make a bit of a mockery of the whole 10 speed thing. Do you really need that many ratios? I think not. The big factor, as I said with the Hilux for me, is the way the ride has been transformed. Unladen, this thing rides better than any Hilux I've ever tested before, and it's a huge difference, especially in this segment when a lot of people use them as a lifestyle vehicle. In a mix of city and highway driving without carrying a load, the fuel consumption average of all three utes were line ball at 10.7 or 10.8 litres per 100 k's. We saw better than this on open road driving, with the Isuzu and Hilux dipping into the 9s and the Ranger into the 8s. Of course, these numbers go out the window the minute you're towing or carrying a load. Well, there you go, guys. In some ways, this dual cab test is probably closer than it's ever been, and you're getting down into really finicky little details when it comes to trying to pick a winner. Now, of course, the full test and all of the data and the breakdown will be in the written review. So go there and check that out and then leave your comments in the comments section below that. But for now, boys, I've got two questions for you. Let's start with the first question. I'll go to each of you. Sam, out of these three dual cabs, no fences. I can't see any fences anywhere around here. No, there's no fences, none to sit on. Okay. Which is the best dual cab of these three? Listen, I'll, I'll qualify by saying that they're all very good. Yeah. They're all better than they've ever been before. Mm. I've got to look at that Ford Ranger pretty closely because even though it's the oldest out of these three, you've got to give Ford hats off for doing that development originally and continually developing that yep. car through its life cycle. I think sure. it rides the best. I think it steers the best. Mm -hmm. That two litre engine, yes, some people won't like the size of it, but it performs well and it's quiet, it's fuel efficient. It does everything really well. Okay, so Ranger for you, Josh, what do you reckon? Best? Oh, I know you said no fences, but City Slicker, mm. Ranger Wild Track. For me, it's the most comfortable, easiest to live with day to day. Yep. It's got all the mod cons that you need. But if you're going to do the big trip around Australia, I've got to say Hilux. Okay, that's an interesting one. For me, the best dual cab, and I say this almost through gritted teeth, is the Ranger, but only just, and I think it's only just better than the D-Max now. So it's very, very close. Now, question number two, and this is perhaps even more important. And again, there are no fences. I want one answer, and I want one reason you hear why. That, Okay, you got that? One answer, one reason why. Which dual cab ute do you buy, Sam Purcell? I buy the D-Max. 
Okay. Why? I like the engine. Yep. I like how torquey it feels. It doesn't need 10 speeds like the Ford does. Yep. I like three litres of capacity, to yep. be honest with you. And although it doesn't ride and steer as nicely as some of the others, it's perfectly fine for a dual cab ute. I okay. prefer to look at other disciplines yep. that are more important, in my opinion. So, D-Max for me. Josh? I'm going to pick one. I'm going to qualify my answer though. So price is a big factor for me in this decision. Yeah. At the moment, the Hilux is back to about 62,000 drive away. It has been 53,990 drive for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. The range of wild track hovers around 62-ish drive away. This thing at 58,990 drive away would get my money. Mm -hmm. So you would buy the D-Max? I would buy the D-Max. I love the steering feel. I think it's got the best steering feel. Yes, it's the lightest, but I think they've really got the blend right. Yeah. I like the advanced safety tech. I like the advanced features. I just wish they could make a little bit of an improvement to the way it steers in tight corners and the infotainment system. But other than that, it's very hard to beat. Okay, and Sam, of course, as I said before, we're gonna revisit this with towing and off-road. I'll be really keen to see how these go off-road because Hilux has always been strong. Absolutely. Be interesting to see how new yeah, D-Max yeah. goes. It's got a rear locker now, different traction control. The Ford's yep. always been good as well. So yep. okay. that'll be an interesting So one. stay tuned to caradvice.com for hang that. Hang on, hang on. What's your choice? Ah, I almost got away scot-free, didn't I? Quickly. Damn, I tried it. Uh, my choice, honestly, and I, you know, it's very, very difficult. It is really, really hard. But for me, I would buy the D-Max. So I think, um, as I said, it's as close to the top of the segment, if not the top of the segment, uh, as anything could be. I think it's a really, really good all-round package. Josh's point on price is a really good one as well. So for me, the D-Max as well. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Don't forget, keep coming back to caradvice.com because we will be towing. We will be going off-road. Don't forget to hit like, click on subscribe. And boys, someone's got to write this. Uh, it's not I'm me. I'm out of here. I've got to go. <laughs> See you later. See you, mate. <laughs>